divine truth frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session one. Why should we believe in spirits and what kind of evidence is there for their existence? Well, the reality is there's a mountain of evidence for the existence of spirits. Of course, every person who dies knows that they become a spirit at some point. So, so every person who's ever lived on Earth and all of the people who currently live on Earth eventually will pass. And as soon as they pass, generally or shortly thereafter, they will come to realise that they are still alive and so therefore are no longer connected to their, spirit, uh, to their physical body, but rather connected to their spirit body. So every single person who's ever alive eventually comes to terms with the fact that there are spirits. <laughs> the majority of them don't come to terms with it while they're on Earth. That's the reality. The reality is the majority, there is a lot of cynicism on Earth. There's a lot of disbelief on Earth. For, for lots of different reasons, although I don't believe they're good reasons, they are often reasons based around cynicism and a lot of inaccuracy as well about understanding truth. But if, you, if we look at the evidence, there's a huge amount of evidence for the existence of a spirit world as well as the existence of people still alive after they've passed. And we have all of this evidence coming from even mostly a lot of it from children. So when a child is usually very, very young, they usually see spirits, they talk to them. And if you ask them, instead of treating the child like they're just talking to an imaginary friend, if you ask them who they're talking to, they'll often give you the name of the person, they'll, give you the, they'll even give you the street address where they used to live <laughs> and how old they were when, when they died and everything else if the, person, if the spirit themselves is conscious of the fact that they've died. And in this way, you know, we can, un we can see quite clearly that the child is obviously seeing somebody and obviously speaking to somebody whom it's convinced exists and the child doesn't see it as a person that's a part of itself. Unfortunately, though, as we get older, we have a tendency to either beat it out of the child or suppress it out of the child through emotional suppression. And so by the time the child becomes an adult, it's rare for the child to retain these particular abilities. Now, of course, though, there are billion, millions of people on this planet who have retained the ability to see spirits, talk with them, hear from them, and interact with them generally. And, uh, and there are literally, literally millions of people who can do this mm -hmm. on the planet. It's interesting that because it's not the experience of the majority of people, the majority of people deny the potential of its existence. Although I would argue the majority of people are quite fascinated by the whole mm -hmm. thing because pretty much everybody we know who has ever had this concept that when you're dead, you're dead, is still very, very fascinated with the whole concept of what happens after your death and, and also con with the concept of why some people seem to be able to foretell things and know things that the average person would never be able to foretell and know without there being some kind of interaction with the spirit world. There is also a huge amount of evidence uh, related to what happens with physical illness. And, uh, and what's going on with the physical body. We see things, for example, like a grandmother dying of cancer and then a child of three getting cancer within, within a few months of the death of the grandmother. And we call that, often we call that genetic disposition. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it makes no sense that it's occurred within just a few months of the parent's death, or the grandparent's death. And so we can see there's a direct relationship between something going on in the grandparent and something going on in the child after the grandparents died. And, and you know, there's a con these are, this is what's come up with concepts of reincarnation and other such concepts mm -hmm. that cause people to come up with ideas or concepts that uh, try to explain these particular phenomena. The reality is there's huge amounts of these particular things going on constantly mm -hmm. and uh, there's plenty of experiments that we could actually devise to test the validity and accuracy of the fact that there is a spirit world and of the fact that every person who dies turn, becomes a spirit who still exists and who often and often stays uh, around the earth and communicating with us for a period of time. And, uh, but unfortunately, most people in the scientific community are very against such experimentation for many philosophical and emotional reasons. 
I believe that if we uh, released those emotional reasons and philosophical reasons, I think we'd find huge amounts of evidence. From our perspective, we've seen them. So obviously mm -hmm. we don't need any evidence ourselves to support the argument. And we've talked to them. Uh, we've spent 2,000 years in the spirit world observing the interaction between spirits and people on earth. So, you know, from our perspective, <laughs> it's a certainty. Yes. I suggest to other people it will become a certainty through their own experience if they allow such experiences to occur. Of course, there are some people who've done that through, you know, e examining things like seances and, and having other kinds of interactions with spirits. But unfortunately, most of the time, they're attracting quite dark spirits or earth spirits who are bound to the earth. And so they don't get a very good concept of the accuracy of what spirits can actually do or see and how they interact with the earth. It's only spirits who have passed over long periods of time and who've progressed in love to higher dimensions generally that can finish up describing in a lot, of, lot more accurate detail the reality of the interaction between people on earth and people who have passed over into the spirit world. So from what you're saying there, there's not a lot of um, there's sort of uh, anecdotal evidence that we have mm -hmm. and things that we can draw, uh, we can make some hypotheses about, mm -hmm. but we don't have concrete evidence because there hasn't been experimentation in this area. Is that No, what I feel you mean? there is concrete evidence. It's yep. just that the concrete evidence uh, has never been engaged in experimentation. It's just yep. been incidental. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we've seen, uh, for example, people have seen objects fly through the air. Uh, obviously something caused the object to fly through the mm -hmm. air, um, but most people saw it and, and you sometimes can see a group of people seeing exactly the same thing. But of course they don't understand what's behind the movement of the object and there's no uh, experimentation after that point. And so of course the, there is no way of validating what the cause was. There is plenty of empirical evidence, it's just that there is a, a, a deep reluctance from the people who scientifically could analyse these causes to, to actually accept what the causes would actually conclude. Mm -hmm. Whereas all the people who know that for certain have already seen the causes and they don't have any drive to provide the scientific <laughs> evidence. <Yeah. laughs> so um, this is the problem we have with most systems on earth. The people who know about it believe in it implicitly uh, because they've seen evidence of it with their own eyes and ears and, and their own life Whereas the people who don't know about it don't believe in it at all because they've never seen any uh, uh, evidence of it in their own life. Yeah. And uh, what I'm suggesting is that there could be many studies done to prove the existence. And there is much proof that's available. But we on Earth generally don't engage this proof. And there are very good reasons why this occurs. Spirits themselves don't always want us to have proof of their existence. Mm -hmm. Many spirits have a lot of advantages over us by our not being able to see or know of their existence and therefore they can influence us as, invi as an invisible influence rather than a visible one. It's much harder to influence somebody when you're standing next to them and they can see you than it is to influence somebody when they're not standing next to you or when they are standing next to you but you can't see them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so many spirits themselves have investments in not being seen and have investments in our not being able to see them. And of course this adds to the problems associated with gathering evidence for the truth of such matters. Mm. And that probably uh, speaks to the first half of this question of why should we believe in spirits? Like, what, if they do exist, why care? Well, yeah. The, why is it relevant, I suppose? Oh, it is just so relevant to our future existence. Um, and yeah. obviously, it also is so relevant to the choices we make in our current life. If, if, uh, if we do live after death, after the death of our physical body, then that changes everything. It changes the way we live our life while we're in the physical body. It changes the types of concepts we have about life, the choices we make here. It even causes us to be much less, more, much more reluctant to engage violence, uh, to protect ourselves from our own death. It also causes us to want to investigate how we progress in the spirit world. How do we develop? How, how does our life continue and investigate all of these matters. 
the reality is if the majority of people on Earth actually believed in the spirit world, there would be huge amounts of investigation occurring on Earth about our future life, and also it would have a huge effect on the choices and decisions we collectively and individually make while we're alive on Earth. Mm. And from what you were saying earlier, we also would... Um, you were saying that spirits can actually influence our decisions and us not being aware of them mm. means that we would be more open to their influence. Of course, well. it's yeah. like having somebody whisper in your ear when you can't see the person whispering in your ear. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's much more difficult to believe that the whisper actually occurred yes. than if so you actually saw a, a person's face with their mouth open in your ear, <laughs> whispering in your ear. And, uh, and it's very much the same with regard to interactions with spirits. If we understood these kind of interactions and these kind of influences existed, then we would be far more circumspect about the choices that we make and we would wonder far more strongly, I suggest, about what influences we are under when we make certain choices. Mm -hmm. The reality is right on the planet at the moment, many deaths occur, murders occur under spirit influence. Many suicides occur under spirit influence. And many of these things potentially would be reduced in terms of the numbers of, of occurrences if the people involved knew that they were being influenced by some third party, by some unseen person who's malevolent, who has, does not have their best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. When we're in the physical, we can see when people don't have our best interests at heart generally. Not all the time, of course, but generally we can. You know, we can see their appearance, we can see their... You know, we can feel the nastiness coming out of them. We can feel the anger and other emotions coming out of them. We can see their motivations easier because we see their face and we see their expressions and so forth. Whereas if, if it's a person who's died, we can't see generally those particular things. And that leaves us far more open to their influence and it leaves us far more open to deceit. Mm -hmm. And so my feelings are if we knew about the spirit world and we understood it more clearly the majority of people on earth would be far more c careful about their decision-making process and they'd be far more circumspect about their choices in their lives. Mm. Does it also work in the reverse in that uh, we would be far more cautious about someone whispering something detrimental or negative in our ear, but perhaps we'd be more open as well to the, to the benefit of, you know, spirits in a higher condition of love being able of to course. assist us. Of course, like, and this is one of the main things that we should perhaps mention, and that is that the reality is if we could see the difference between a nasty spirit and a spirit that was good, in other mm. words, see the difference between a nasty person and a person that's good, yeah. but see the difference even though they're invisible to our eyes right at this point in time, then surely we would listen to the person <laughs> who's good more often yes. than we do. And we would listen to the person who's not so good less often than we do. Mm -hmm. The problem for us many times is the persons that are trying to influence in a, us in a positive direction from the spirit world, in a direction of love, have less influence over us because we can't see them. And the person who, who we can see, um, or, or sorry, can't see, but who are in a darker condition of love, have a, a stronger influence over us because we can't see them. Mm. And if we could actually see them and we interacted with them and understand their existence and understand what their motivations were, then we would be far more careful about who we're actually listening to and we'd also be far more open and we'd probably make much more rapid progress as a human race than we currently are. Mm. Mm. Mm.